gingival grafting of the facial of bicuspid, lower bicuspid teeth using periodermal. Let's first talk about Miller's classification of gingival recession and what, what can we reasonably expect from a gingival grafting procedure. What is the objective of gingival grafting? The first objective, in my mind, is adequate attached gingiva. The second objective is to improve the aesthetics of the tooth. Now with Miller's system, class one gingival recession is marginal tissue recession does not extend beyond the mucogingival junction with no loss of interproximal tissue. There's 100% root coverage expected. Class two, marginal tissue recession that extends to or beyond the mucogingival ju junction attached, unattached, keratinized, unattached, I mean unkeratinized gingiva, with no loss of interproximal tissue. That means the gingival height is normal. There's no interproximal gingival uh, loss of tissue. Again, 100% root coverage is expected. A class three, marginal tissue recession extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction, meaning the recessions into the unattached non-keratinized gingiva with some loss of interproximal tissue or tooth rotation, meaning the interproximal papilla have recessed or have uh, are more apical than they were years ago in this patient. The interproximal bone is still coronal to the apical extent of the recession. Only 70% root coverage is expected. That means the interproximal bone is coronal to the apical extent of the recession, but you're not going to get complete root coverage. Then class four is marginal tissue recession extends to or past the mucogingival junction with severe loss of interproximal tissue. The gingival uh, papilla have been, uh, some of the height has been lost. Our tooth rotation, less than 50% root coverage is expected. All right, let's look at this again so we know what we're looking at with this case. This is very important. And this was brilliant when P.D. Miller put this together back in, he first published this in 1985. And it's still the gold standard. So class one is when the marginal tissue recession does not extend to the mucogingival junction. Here's the mucogingival junction. So it does, it's, the recession is still in the attached gingiva. There's no periodontal bone loss in the interdental area, meaning the bone levels are normal. In this case, you would expect 100% root coverage. Class two, the marginal tissue recession extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction. So here's the mucogingival line. This is non-attached, non-keratinized tissue, and this is attached, keratinized tissue. So it's extending past the mucogingival junction. No periodontal loss in the interdental area, meaning the papilla are normal height and the bone levels are normal height. In this case, you would also expect 100% root coverage. The bone and the interdental soft tissue have a lot to do with the success of periodontal uh, gingival grafting. Class three, the marginal tissue recession extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction. Again, here's the mucogingival junction. Bone or soft tissue loss in the interdental area or malpositioning of the teeth, meaning we've got bone loss and we've got loss of some of the papillary height. So you would not expect 100% root coverage. Partial root coverage is expected. You can't expect root coverage past the normal height of the papilla if the you know wherever the bone is you can't expect much more uh, root coverage than the height of the interproximal bone and then class four marginal tissue recession which extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction here's the mucogingival junction severe bone loss or soft tissue loss in the interdental area and or malpositioning of the teeth. We've lost a lot of bone. So you expect no root coverage in this case. All you're trying to achieve is keratinized tissue 
in this area. Just keratinized attached gingiva at the apical part of the defect. So let's look at a case. We're grafting the two bicuspids. You can see that there's some bone loss, but we have uniform bone height. So we're giving a mandibular block and also anesthetizing in the mental foramen area, area. So the first thing I'm doing is recontouring the facial of these teeth. So this is just a very fine football diamond. And I'm just smoothing that and creating a fresh surface. So this is Danny Milker's technique. Now I'm leaving the lingual half of the papilla. So I'm cutting through the, the center of the papilla and reflecting half of it to the facial, but I'm leaving the lingual one half. And this is a split thickness incision. I'm trying to leave some of the periosteum on the bone so that the graft receives blood supply from the periosteum on the bone and the reflected flap. This is number 12 and 15 Bard Parker. And just again, it's a split thickness flap, so I'm cutting between the periosteum and the flap. Being very careful in this area because remember we've got the mental foramen at the apex of the second bicuspid, so you don't want to cut deep. You also don't want to place a retractor right on the mental foramen. So releasing incision mesial to the first bicuspid, but I'm paying very close attention to the mental foramen area. So I'm not reflecting all the way down into the vestibule. So again, creating a fresh surface on the roots of the teeth, scaling, be sure all calculus is removed and that's fresh cementum, enamel, and dentin. Then I'm etching with 38% phosphoric acid. Again, this is Danny's technique. It's the same etch we use for composite. And I'm gonna etch the surfaces of those teeth for 45 seconds each. Now I want fresh, a fresh surface in approximately so that the gingival tissue I'm suturing to the interproximal uh, one half of the papilla is touching a fresh, a fresh surface, just uh, it'll heal better. So I'm removing that just so this is a fresh raw surface. And I'm not removing the lingual one half of the papilla. You want that to stay intact. Then here's my periderm. And it doesn't matter which side of the periderm goes against the tooth, according to Danny. And I like to cut the edges, the, the corners off. I'm placing a good piece of the periderm all the way back past the first molar. And I'm going to suture the periderm in place with 4-0 gut suture. I'm going to suture it in place first. You don't want that periderm membrane to be moving. I want it to be held rigidly against the teeth. Now this is much higher on the tooth, much more coronal than it's going to end up after it's healed. Next I'm going to suture the tissue over the periderm. And now this is with 4-0 gut suture. So you can see this is completely covering the defect. I know I'm not going to get this much coverage. This would, I would classify this as a class three on the Miller classification system. And so I'm, exp I'm hoping for about 50 to 70 percent <coughs> root coverage along with some additional uh, keratinized gingiva. So I would classify this as a three. The marginal tissue recession extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction with some loss of interproximal tissue or tooth rotation. The interproximal bone is still coronal to the apical extent of the recession, only 70% of the root coverage. So if the person's got a lot of recession and a lot of root exposure, 
and the the bone even if the bone is uniform uniform if it's past the CEJ of the tooth you're not going to get coverage all the way to the CEJ you you know you're not going to have tissue 5 or 6 millimeters from the alveolar crest of bone that's just not going to happen this is where we're operating right here Marginal tissue recession which extends to or beyond the mucogingival junction, bone or soft tissue loss, any interdental area or malpositioning of the teeth presenting 100%. So we're expecting about 70%, hopefully. You can see we've got some bone loss, but we have a uni pretty uniform alveolar crest. There's no bone loss down to the uh, furcation area of the molar. So you can see here's the final result, and you see with these photographs, the new mucogingival junction. So we've added about, oh, a couple of millimeters of attached gingiva coronally. Very effective technique, and that's the Dental Minute.